So So Lounge. Today, I'm going to teach you how to transfer the marks from a pattern piece onto your fabric so you're ready to start sewing. Before we begin, let's go over some supplies that you need. Number one is going to be some tracing paper. Now, Dritz makes a wax-free tracing paper, which you can find at most fabric and craft stores. And then there's also this Sorrel tracing paper, which I bought on Amazon. I kind of like the Sorrel a little bit better. It, the marks transfer a little bit clearer, but use whatever you've got or what's easy for you to get. Next, you're gonna need a tracing wheel. Now, tracing wheels look like these little pointy kind of medieval torture device things. And um, one of these will work perfectly to transfer the straight lines from your pattern onto your fabric. Whichever one you like, there's no right or wrong one. So whatever you got on hand or whatever's easy to find is the best way to go. And last, you need a pencil of some sort. So a regular number two pencil works just fine. You don't want anything with a point that's too sharp because you don't want to poke holes through your fabric and mark on the right side of your fabric. We're just using it to draw the markings through the paper, through the fabric, and onto the tracing paper so that the markings will all be on the inside of your garment. Now you may be wondering, where is the step that says I have to transfer the marks from the pattern onto my fabric? If you go back to your pattern instructions, and just as a refresher, we are making Butterick 4498. It's a basic A-line dress, and if you went and got the modern version, it's going to be better at 6653. Um, these are the pattern instructions. If you go back to the section that says fabric cutting layouts, and you go all the way down to the very, very bottom, there was a single sentence that says, transfer all markings and lines of construction before removing the pattern tissue. They don't really give you a lot of instruction on which markings you're supposed to transfer. And I guess they just hope you'll do your best. I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step step to make sure that you transfer all the marks that you need to complete the sewing part of this garment construction. If you joined us in the last video, which was laying out your pattern for cutting, then you may recall that the pattern pieces were face down and that made it a lot harder for them to be read to transfer the markings. So I reoriented the fabric and the pattern pieces and so everything is right side up and it's going to be a lot easier to read and follow along. We're going to start with the dart on the front pattern piece. So this is piece number one and it's right side up so it's easy to read and the dart is going to shape the fabric to go around your bust. Grab a piece of tracing paper and when you're choosing tracing paper, you want to choose a color that is going to be um, light enough that it's not going to show through the fabric, but it needs to be dark enough that it's going to show up and enough of a contrast so it'll show up on your fabric. So generally darker colors for lighter fabrics, but not super dark. I mean, as you can see, these colors are not, none of the colors are super dark, but you wouldn't want to use white on this fabric that has a white background. So we're going to start with the dritz and as you can see like my hands have gotten a little bit chalky don't worry about that but you may not want to wear like super good clothing if you're doing this when you transfer markings you want them to be on the inside of the garment so you're going to take the transfer paper and you want to make sure that the chalky side that gets your fingers dirty is on the outside and you're going to part your fabric so you're going in between the two pieces of fabric and you want to line it up with whatever mark you're gonna be making. So with this dart, we're gonna put it in at an angle. We're gonna make sure it comes all the way past the point of the dart. And then we're gonna line everything back down again. Let's go in for a closer look. You may have noticed that the paper has changed. That is because the yellow was too light and we're now redoing this in blue. Just take your tracing wheel and you're gonna follow the line so you may want to hold the fabric taut with your left hand or your left handed, your right hand. And then you're just going to roll along the line with the tracing wheel. There's no rush, so just take your time. And then you can go to the other line and repeat the process. Again, you can hold down the paper so it doesn't move too much. 
but so your mark gets transferred. Now, let's flip it back and check it out. You can kind of see this one's a little green because I went over the yellow, but you can easily see the blue dots and where we're gonna need to fold. Actually, you can't see that easily. Okay, now you can see the blue dots here and bluish green dots over here. And that's what we're gonna need for making the dart. Now, the other thing I like to do is go back in and zoom out a little. I go in and I mark all these little dots because I like to match them up to the dots on the other side. And then I press my door after I've sewn it. I just think it makes it a lot easier. Uh, you don't theoretically have to do all of these because these are for the different seam allowances. So I'm just gonna go with the top one, the middle one, and the very bottom one. And we can unfold our fabric and you can see, let's zoom in again. You can see how the dots have transferred here and here because that's what we're going to match up along the lines later when we sew this dart together. The next mark we're going to need to transfer is this triangle up here on the shoulder that's going to be used for the uh, bias binding that's going to finish the neckline. So take your paper, we're going to stick it in there between the two layers of fabric. And you can use a pencil, but this doesn't always work. So we're gonna use our little tracing wheel instead and just mark the sides. And you can see that it's transferred to both sides of the fabric and we're good to go. On the back of the pattern piece, which is piece number five, and it's facing us so we can read it, we're gonna need to transfer the shoulder detail as well, which is that same little triangle that we did on the front because that's going to go for the neckline, which goes onto both pieces. So we'll do that real quick and didn't go through to the back again. Like I said, sometimes this paper doesn't work super great. Press a little harder, a little more force. Okay, there's the big one. You can see one back here. That's gonna be good enough. And let's go to the zipper and the center back. So starting at the top, the center back line is marked. That's where they wanna put the seam. And if you grab a hem gauge, you can see that that is gonna be 5 eighths of an inch, which is the standard seam allowance on commercial patterns, as we've discussed before. And there's a marking up here for the zipper. So that's where the top of the zipper has to go. And they want you to do this because you're gonna to have to sew in the bias tape, which is going to change the neckline. So they want you to put the zipper at a specific mark. So we're gonna put our tracing paper in there and we're gonna go down to that center back mark. And then you're gonna find the line that corresponds with your pattern size. So the solid line is the one that I cut off for my size and I'm gonna mark it. And you can make it a little bit longer. You wanna make sure that the mark transfers through. Let's see if it's over on that side, yes. And then we wanna put in the center back line as well, just to keep everything lined up in case we get off track. So center back line, and there it is again. Now we're gonna move down to the bottom of the zipper. Next, we're gonna to go to the base of the zipper and we wanna transfer this large dot. So I've got my tracing paper in there. I'm going to color and press hard to transfer that mark. And then for extra good measure, I'm gonna go over it with a line. And make sure that you transfer the mark for the style you are making. So if we were making A, which was the drop waist skirt, we put in the zipper a little bit higher. It's not quite as long of a zipper. And for B and C, we're gonna go with a lower zipper, which was a longer zipper. And make sure your mark is transferred. And there it is on the other side. And we are good to go. And now you know how to transfer your pattern markings to your fabric. This is a very basic pattern, so the number of markings we had to transfer were extremely limited. Just had the dart on the front, shoulder marking on the front and the back, and then the marks on the back for the zipper and center back. If you have a more complicated pattern, and it may or may not have more markings on it, 
and you're not sure what you need to transfer, you just go to your instructions, and this is the sewing instruction part, and you want to go through and look for any markings that are referenced. So for example, this is a basic pattern. The, the main marking is going to be the black dot on the zipper. So that's the mark we transferred at the very end, the base of the zipper, and that is the mark that's going to show up in the instructions. So if you read through your instructions and plan ahead, you can make sure that you mark everything that you need for sewing success. If you've enjoyed this video, be sure to click like and subscribe to my channel so you never miss a stitch. If you've got questions but no one to answer them, head on over to Facebook and check out Let's Talk Sewing for Beginners hosted by Sew Sew Lounge. It's an interactive Facebook group where you can ask all the questions you want and I'll do my very best to get you some answers. I go live in the group every Wednesday at 4.30 Central Standard Time with tutorials and Q&A. Check it out. Until we meet again, happy sewing!